Avrian. Before we dive right into the action, I just wanted to let you know that all the opening theory used in this series can be found in my latest London system course, will be the first link in the description. Okay, getting the white pieces, I'm gonna be trying out another London system. Let's see what opponent has in store for us. I'm gonna be playing knight f3, will it be a Chigorin? It's a bishop g4 early move, which is also broken down in the course. And the key idea is to no longer play a London, but get to activate our knight. This is also one of the perks of having played knight f3 on the second move instead of bishop f4. And now against this move, if you want to be trappy, maybe h4. h4 is actually not so great because of knight d7, I believe, and g4, knight takes on e5. But now we can just do g4. Hitting the bishop and now do h4. This is hell of annoying. Now they're forced to play either f6 or move the pawn. And now uh, can simply take and then follow it up with queen d3. This line is still in the course, like all the way up till here. And this is this is a part of it. And okay, h5 is definitely a blunder. He was supposed to do queen d6 i think it's covered in the course and maybe we're stopping after knight c3 saying bishop g2 we put pressure we break it with e4 and we play bishop d2 long castle but after h5 is pretty obvious we can start collecting and his king is actually looking pretty close of getting mated so perhaps after takes bishop h3 next could already be quite deadly if he allows that move yeah with rook h6 but now okay first of all that can be taken i know but wondering if this is quicker. I guess not really. Yeah, I'm gonna take the rook and then do bishop h3. e6, queen e6 will be pretty quick mate. So that is basically how you can get just uh, three wins with this opening. Just uh, get your knight f3. This is all broken down in the course. When they play bg4, you can exploit it with knight e5. Sure, they could also play bishop f5, but I think. Same idea there could work. I think I recommend e3 and then g4. It's similar stuff and just get to exploit uh, the weakness of this bishop. So I managed to get a pretty fast checkmate there. Can we, we can just go for the next one. Getting another white game. We're gonna be trying out the London system. And opponent going for the England. We're gonna be accepting the gamble. And all right, he's going for a version with f6, which is a bit strange. Honestly, I don't think we have it in the course, just because I felt like this is not that critical. But I'm going to play simply e4, because I don't think it's a problem if he takes, because of queen h5. And then we can just win it back. So let's see what he has in mind. Assuming knight c6 is best move for him, but then I think knight f3 should be pretty good. f e5, sure he wins back the pawn, but we're gonna be much better there anyways. So yeah, I don't wanna take on f6. I'm just gonna allow him to win back his pawn and we're gonna be playing that position because he's gonna have a hard time castling after let's say he plays knight f6 i think maybe bishop g5 is great move yeah i actually don't remember i think maybe just starting with bishop c4 controlling this diagonal so he won't be able to castle and i know whenever they do something like h6 we have knight h4 and other than that could simply play bishop g5 with knight e5 i think that's like a pretty strong idea in these positions or at least it was the last time I checked. I'm just gonna develop my bishop. Not afraid of b5 as we can simply step back to b3. And pretty hard for him to continue. Like bishop e7 would be a move. But still, I think maybe we can simply take and play knight e5. If they do that. I think that's like an appropriate reply. But we're also not forced with it, so could do a waiting move, maybe like an a3. <laughs> okay, h6. So he plays this. For sure, we can take. 
Now after the queen captures, there will be knight e5, pretty strong. Not only attacking the queen, but also hitting c7. And I'm pretty sure we could play like knight h4 next, even against this maybe. So he's protecting that. But I think knight h4 works well with the idea that, well, we're threatening queen h5. Doesn't have a good reply to that because we can win the g6 pawn and yeah, I could even go for it now for the sake of simplicity. Could also drop the bishop back. Yeah, let's just drop it back. But I think it's just way more precise to throw this in first and then step back with the bishop because g6 doesn't work in view of knight takes. Yeah, he, he was supposed to move the king, but now just get to attack the rook, threatening a lot of annoying discoveries. Expecting him to play rook g8, but then we have just an easy win coming. Funny way to win would be knight a8. I think I'm gonna be playing that move just to be funny, but could do like anything really. I'm just gonna play knight e5 because it's like the most natural one, I would say. But knight e8 was also doable, just you know, going for like a funny solution. But after this, knight f7 is forced mate. King uh, e8 takes, king d8, and yeah. Checkmate. He finds the better defense. We can just go for the end game. But I think taking it with a knight is just a bit more effective because we have the same threat playing knight e5 and do that thing where we win the queen next. I'm just gonna take it with a knight. Even though I say all the time we need to go for the end game, here is just way too good not to keep queens because we're about to checkmate him. But of course, if you're like practicing, I would say trading queens is still a solid idea. Here I obviously see that there is a forced mate, but if you're unsure, just trade the queens, it always works. I'll just go for this check. Knight f7, knight x on uh, b6 coming. Yeah, like winning the queen with a discovery attack as well. And there's no way to actually. Avoid that as black now. And we're gonna be getting the forced checkmate pretty soon, yes. After this, double check. Has to go king d8 and now we get the mate on the board. So we managed to get this one in. Okay, getting a new one. Gonna open up with d4 and against d5. Gonna be starting out with a knight. C knight f6, just developing the bishop out to f4. And let's see. Yeah, knight c6, we get to see the two knights Chigorin. Now they have two plans. Bishop outside the pawn chain or to g4. This is still in the same category with bishop outside the pawn chain. We start with h3. We just ask the bishop what it wants to do. And okay, see a line where opponent trades. Most of the times, my guess is that opponents go to h5, where I recommend bishop b5. And against e6, a quick uh, g4 and knight e5. Putting pressure on this knight. But after they trade, Gonna be taking. They usually play e6 with bishop d6 now. You can play c3 and knight e2 against that. And uh, yeah, I think in the course, I recommend something like going for an aggressive g4. There are many lines that I have analyzed in this position. There is also one uh, after bishop d6, knight e2, short castle. I've looked up at some e5 line, like in this position, for instance. Well, you're actually supposed to play bishop g5 and you are uh, better after e4. It kind of looks crazy to allow that fork. So I felt like, okay, that's kind of hard for people to spot during game. Okay, opponent just goes e5 right away. This is not included in the course, but I guess because it's worse. Let's try to figure out why. Now, that is the question. No. First thing we can take, second thing is we can play bishop g5. First, let's actually break down taking. So it's gonna take with a knight typically into queen g3, put pressure on that, attack g7, assuming it goes knight g6, and then we can take twice on d6. 
and he has a weak pawn. So I think that's actually pretty good for us. Wait, maybe I have actually missed uh, a move there. I think I might have missed the fact that if on, we do go queen g3, has the move knight h5. And that is not clear at all. So maybe on e5, it's actually best to just do bishop g5. We're going to have a quick look in the analysis tab afterwards. Maybe bishop g5 was supposed to be best. And then on e4, mm, maybe just take twice on f6 and play that end game. That's very well doable. Not sure. We'll check it out together. Now, okay, when they take with a bishop, this is not really optimal, I think, for my opponent. Thinking to do bishop b5, threatening takes and takes. Could also just do bishop d3 as well. Mm, bishop b5. So yeah, like the same line with taking in queen g3. Now he gets maybe like easier time. Play knight g6. However, there could be bishop d3. Yeah, I think we're gonna do like the same motif, maybe. Targeting both. And trying to play for some kind of attack. He's gambiting. Opponent going for the gambit style. Idea to castle long. I see. Well, I think we kind of have to take these. Just take the free pawn and try to show that there is not enough play. I think that's the strategy now. Just take the free stuff, expecting him to go long and now time to bring back the queen somehow. Maybe that's inaccurate, could have started long castle. But... Yeah, like the thing is now that I'm considering is maybe he could throw in b4. Because my king is in the middle and if I go cd, he has rook d4. That's actually what I missed. So now when they play rook d6, this is definitely not really bothering me. Yes. You can just bring the queen back home. Something like queen f4. I think feels pretty nice. This square is covered by the bishop. And yeah, I think he definitely missed a big opportunity there to play d4 to open up the position. I kind of allow that. I, I should have gone long castle here and I don't think he gets enough play for the pawn. d4 is no longer an option because my king is not in the middle. I kind of rushed a bit with queen h6 there, but I think now we should have more or less everything under control. Plays rook d8. So we could try to get rid of this sort of annoying knight that he has by playing knight f3. Could get myself castled as well. Could play bishop e2. I think I'll just do knight f3. Trying to exchange pieces because we have the extra pawn. Yeah, I just want to sort of not really allow any counterplay. But I guess he will eventually get some counterplay. But I'll just do knight f3. Sticking with the strategy when we're going for the trades and... Yeah, well... Something that maybe he can try out is takes. But maybe now it's even better to take with a pawn. Because we're controlling that e4 square, which he may want to use for the knight. So this could be pretty clever. Although, once again, I have allowed d4. Now, that's like just a constant theme for the game. I shouldn't be allowing that and I'm just allowing it. I don't like the way this game is so far being played. I think we're still okay. Need to get ourselves castled eventually. Should have done that a while ago. I just uh, kind of focused on getting rid of his knight. Okay, he's breaking in the center, so this definitely makes sense what he tries. I think we can even ignore it and just play bishop d3. Idea is to go bishop f5 check. Sure, he gets like knight d5 idea, but can sort of easily deal with it. And okay, queen e6 is pretty fortunate for us, but I think we were also doing quite okay. Even though this has definitely been a bit of a messy game. I think he tried like uh, an interesting line. They're going for the early e5, which uh, 
Perhaps could be added as a clickable inside the course. I think I'll, I'll probably do that. As I think many people could play this way, especially in the noob lines. And now we just get to win the queen. And trading rooks next. Infiltrating could be a pretty quick checkmate as well. Yeah, just rook d1. Can give this check, could go queen b8. Just take the pawn, I guess. Keep it simple. I don't see like the first uh, mate. Yeah, 95. All right, he <laughs> finds the resign button and we managed to get this one in. But I'm like really curious. Just gonna have a quick look with like a weaker engine on these. He's definitely not that good for opening. But yeah, so as I was saying here, my instinct was kind of right. We were supposed to play BG5. Because in the game, I thought we have, after knight e5, I thought we have queen g3. But as you can see, everything that I calculated is kind of winning for us. But he has this move that I missed in the first place. So, yeah, this was a bit inaccurate for sure. What I did, I was just supposed to do bishop g5. Yeah, this is important on e4. Then the point is to go for intermezzo and play this end game. And for sure, I've seen similar positions and I can tell that. White is much better after something like c4, undermining the e4 pawn. In the case of knight b4, I think maybe just king d1 and a3, get rid of the knight. If they do go c6, I think, yeah, like sort of an easy way would be like c5, a3, and then maybe even take the knight. Even though we don't have to, I think maybe could be a solid idea and break with f3, something like that. With like pretty promising endgame. So here important not to do what I did, which was taking, but playing bishop g5. This is definitely not super theoretical at all, but king get played. So you may want to be familiar with this theme. Hey everybody, before I let you go, I wanted to sort of give you a little bit of help if you're still uh, debating whether to use uh, chessable over the old book format. And uh, one of the main advantages that you have while uh, getting a chessable course is the fact that uh, they can get updated on a regular basis so as you just seen into the video right into the previous game uh, we have uh, faced this position and while writing the course my initial thought was that okay black will castle in this position and then later on they will be considering the e5 break but now uh, after the game was played, we realized that, okay, black could go for e5 here, which at first to me it uh, appeared as a little bit unnatural. And then I figured out, okay, this is actually something that needs to be included. And uh, right now, as you see it on the screen, it is already part of the course. So you just get this really nice and quick updates. And uh, we have just added a trainable after I did a little bit more research with uh, stronger engines and came to the conclusion that uh, instead of taking, we should be going after this move and then uh, enter the following end game that I mentioned, break with c4, undermine their pawns, but uh, uh, yeah, a night before also just play king d1. This is just a little trainable that uh, we have added and uh, this is gonna be happening on a regular basis, uh, at least weekly. You're gonna be seeing new lines all over the place. Uh, based on uh, what I get to face in my own games and also based upon your feedback. So if you have any questions, you can let me know here down into the comments notes and uh, I will get uh, back to you in less than uh, 24 uh, hours. So if you're still considering to get my course, you can do it uh, now while it's still on an introductory sale by uh, clicking uh, this little thing that will appear on the screen and uh, Thank you for making it this far into the video and I'll see you around on the channel. Take care.